Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro. I'm a past president of the North American Menopause Society, and today I'm joined by the immediate past president of the North American Menopause Society, Dr. Cassandra Schufeld. Welcome. Please tell the women who are watching us today how lucky we are to have you because of who you are and what you do. <laughs> And why we're talking about this uh, this topic? Well, I'm Dr. Cassandra Schufeld, and I am professor and chair of the Division of General Internal Medicine at Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida, and I am the associate director for the Center for Women's Health Research at Mayo Clinic. I am also the chair of the non-hormonal position statement, led leading a group of very, um, very experienced menopause practitioners who did, took a deep dive into all the research that's been done on non-hormonal treatment since really since. 2015, which was when the last position statement came out. So for many women who have the preference not to pay, take menopausal hormone therapy, even though it's the gold standard, or for women who cannot because of a contraindication, there is so much confusion about what you can take that's non-hormonal to help you with bothersome hot flashes and night sweats. So I think it's so important as a society that you can help lead women in general about what is safe to use, what is effective to use, as opposed to what's more anecdotal. So let's start with, you know, why you chose to do this and, and what's new from the very first position statement that we had back eight years ago. Yeah, and I think as a scientific organization, we are really giving an expert opinion about what the evidence shows and what the research shows. So this is really where we can then say, okay, we would recommend using your energy towards this type of treatment versus no, that really hasn't been shown scientifically to prove that it improves hot flashes and night sweats. So I think we can focus really on what has been updated in the statement are the medication sections. That's what was really, has been really scientifically moved forward in the non-hormonal space. And I will go back to something you said as you intro this is that we still wanna make sure that women who don't have contraindications patients to hormone therapy um, who are at the time of menopause that are, have bothersome symptoms, really, we do want those women that are appropriate for hormone therapy on hormone therapy. So this shouldn't be replacing hormone therapy. And it's meant to really think to, to the women who have contraindications, have had a heart attack or a blood clot, or even an estrogen sensitive cancer, um, or, or for other reasons, decide not to take it. And so they don't have to suffer in silence. So the so biggest, critical though, so critical because right. really you're talking about the fact that there are still prescription medications that leave the hormonal world for these women that do have good data associated with it. So we're not sending you to go struggle in an over-the-counter situation. So let's right. talk about what you can prescribe. Yeah, so one of the main classes of medications that you can prescribe, it's off-label for most of them, but on-label for one, are the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or selected norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, serotonin. So these are medications that work in the brain. They're often prescribed for on-label for depression, but now we have one for, non, for hot flashes and night sweats. But what we've learned through the science is that the area that controls hot and cold perception is controlled by serotonin. So giving low doses of these medications and, and the scientific proof that we found um, the position statement is supporting the use of these medications for hot flashes and night sweats. So that's number one. Number two is the gabapentin medication that could be that has also been found scientifically to improve hot flashes and night sweats, even in low doses. And so that is what we also are recommending. And number three, this is new to the guidelines this year, is a medication called oxybutynin. It's on label for overactive bladder, but we have, it's been found in clinical trials, small albeit, that it, it, it does dramatically improve hot flashes and night sweats. So these are three kind of medications, um, maybe on label or off label, you, that you can talk to your doctor about using them if they're right for you um, to treat your hot flashes and night sweats. Then there were some medications that were used eight years ago that we're now saying, given newer data, we're no longer endorsing these medications. I think it's important for women to know what we do, you know, do not think the literature supports in terms of you using them. 
right? And this is where the medication section has changed because in 2015, the science was in small studies was supporting the use of pregabalin. And over this period of time, pregabalin has actually, it's a, it's a similar class of medications to the gabapentins, but it comes with a lot of side effects um, such as weight gain. And, and it actually has been put on what we call a, a controlled medication list. So it's harder to get. And we felt as an expert panel, even based on the small studies that were done that might've showed improvement, we felt that the risks or kind of the side effect profile really outweighed the benefit of this medication. And so that way, that's why it was removed from the, the recommenda recommended um, position statement. The other one that was on it at one point from the previous is clonidine. This is a medication that's oftentimes used in blood pressure. It had some small improvement for, for hot flashes and night sweats, but the panel felt even given the, the, the small studies that were done, that the side effect profile also did outweigh any kind of benefit that we would see above and beyond those the first three classes of medications that we have to offer women. So we didn't feel that that needed to be continued to be recommended when we have other medications that are available. And then to the world of supplements, because I think it's important for women to understand that the way supplements are regulated is very different than the way medications are regulated. And often there are all types of claims that supplements will make? And are any of these claims founded? Because women will often think, well, I'd rather use a supplement. It, it seems that it will be so much safer. And this is where the, the, sci the science really took us. We took a really deep dive into um, what studies were done on what size sample size they were done, who funded the studies itself. And we actually looked to see that given the, um, the lack of rigorous evidence-based scientific research, and what I mean by that, the gold standard research is where you give somebody a medication and compare it to a placebo. It really did, didn't did so show that over-the-counter supplements and as well as herbal therapies were not supported for the management specifically of hot flashes and night sweats. And therefore these remedies were not recommended. So as a, as a chair of the statement, we can say, probably save your money. Don't go down that aisle. Talk to your doctor instead and see that the other ones that are there um, for, for treatment of non-hormonal therapy. And then there are other lifestyle strategies that overall are good for general health. No one's going to tell you not to exercise or eat healthy or get enough sleep, but they don't necessarily make an impact on hot flashes. So that's a little disappointing, but what, what do we know about that? Yeah, and this is where small studies um, have not really found that cooling techniques worked. We don't show that there's um, this is an option that, uh, really scientifically to support the use. What did work, however, is weight loss, and that was recommended. Um, but, you know, if you think about um, the importance of weight loss for overall health, I think it's great. Um, dietary modifications, we really, a healthy diet is important, but it, did show, it didn't find to be a tool for improving vasomotor symptoms. I will speak to the mind-body techniques that we really did go through a lot of the science in that. And that's where, you know, mind-body techniques include like things like paced breathing, cognitive behavioral therapy, and cognitive behavioral therapy really did sh has shown to reduce the bother of an interference of hot flashes, as well as clinical hypnosis, and that was still um, carried forward from the previous scientific statement. So hypnosis is an option for um, treatment of hot flashes and night sweats. And I think one of the important parts of looking at position statements from an organization like the North American Menopause Society is letting women know that we're watching the direction of research, that when we do position statements, it's because science evolves. We don't change our mind necessarily, but the science informs us more. So one of the exciting areas in this position statement is letting women know what may be coming up next, not necessarily here yet or for prime time, but let's keep you informed. So what seems exciting in the future for women? Yeah, so this is an exciting time for us as scientists to see the future of non-hormonal treatments. And there's a new non-hormonal therapies. They are not yet FDA approved, but they do deserve mention. And we had a section specifically to the neurokinin B antagonist, a big word, but this is really, it goes back to our understanding of a hot flash physiology in the brain. And this is a, an area of the brain that actually can somewhat control the hot flashes from occurring. So this is um, this is a new section that hopefully in upcoming, we didn't, it's not approved, so we didn't recommend or not recommend it 
recommend it, but we did um, call out that these are under development for the management of hot flashes. And this is an exciting area of research. So we know this isn't our last position statement. There'll be more to come for sure. <laughs> right. This is why we continue to do them. So I think it's really exciting for women in general to turn to an organization like the North American Menopause Society to really see what we know in terms of facts and evidence as opposed to what are anecdotes. And it's really the facts and evidence that can really help you make a good decision with your healthcare practitioner about how to best treat your menopausal hot flashes. Yeah, and I will say that there'll be a meno notes that will accompany this. So this is a um, this is a piece of uh, you could go to menopause.org and print off a meno note, which is going to tell you an outline of what is recommended. Um, it's a summary statement for women out there that are suffering from hot flashes and night sweats that can't go on hormone therapy or choose not to. So this is something you could actually print up and take into your doctor's office and talk to them about these options that are scientifically vetted and, and, and have that conversation so that, again, it comes back to not suffering in silence. Thank you so much for joining us and updating us across the country. Thank you very much.